We all start from scratch, knowing nothing and learning little by little. This requires a lot of effort and time. Some people want to achieve big things without much work, but that's not realistic. When Leonardo started, he used to spend five or even six hours on a single difficult repair, and sometimes he even lost money in this process. What he learned is that you can't give up no matter how tough things get. Staying strong and continuing to try not only helps you overcome problems now, but also gives you an edge over others in the future. Every challenge, every obstacle, every failure is actually an opportunity to learn something new. That strength and your firm personality are what ultimately helps us to improve and succeed. So if you are starting out, remember, dedicate time, put in effort and never stop fighting. The road may be long and difficult, but the result will be worth it. Hello everyone, my name is Adriana and today Leonardo is going to repair a device from the prestigious Apple range, specifically an iPhone 8. This particular device has a problem of not turning on even when we connect it to the charger. It does not show any noticeable power consumption, so we have determined that the problem seems to be with the motherboard. We start the repair process by disassembling the device. To do this, we first remove the two screws located at the bottom of the chassis. Then, using a suction cup, we create a small gap between the chassis and the screen. With the support of the plastic pick, we carefully cut the adhesive that keeps the screen attached to the chassis. Once inside the device, we proceed to remove the four screws that holds the metal sheet in place and disassemble the cover that covers it. Before we proceed, it's essential to disconnect the battery connector to prevent any possible short circuit in the motherboard. With the screen and the battery out of equation, we can proceed to perform a more detailed diagnosis. We connect the device to the power laboratory supply to measure consumption on the motherboard. In this case, we use a phone Kong 18-in-1 source. We will try to provide purchase links for all the power laboratory supplies we use in our laboratory. In the description of this video, I will leave you the links. To start in the world of the microelectronics, you need to have at least these pillars. A tester, a power laboratory supply, a microscope, a soldering iron and a hot air station. Our analysis indicates that there is consumption on the motherboard. Despite their severity, these failures are usually the easiest to detect. With a moderate investment in the right tools, one can become an expert in repairing these faults and make substantial income from it. We check the battery connector and we find that there is no voltage. However, at the test points, we register voltages of 5 and 3 volts, indicating that there is current in the motherboard. In our next step, we proceed to gently remove the motherboard from the chassis. We apply a little heat using the hot air station and we remove the protectors. Now we go to our thermal camera to detect if there is any current leakage on any specific area that is heating up more than normal. It is important to observe this specific area. Intermittent heating is detected, all through I am convinced that the component in question is in a good condition. The problem we suspect may be located elsewhere. If we don't have a thermal camera, we can use the rosin technique. There are plenty of tutorials on internet. 
Next, we rule out the problem beginning in the U2 component. We have a series of videos that explain how to measure this component and determine wherever it is working properly or not. I will leave you a playlist on this topic above. So far, all indications suggest that the circuit is in a good condition. The circuit we detect that was intermittently heating up is one we are going to pay attention to. So, our task now is to look for capacitors in short circuit in this area. We discover that these two capacitors are in short circuit, indicating that the line is in short. We proceed to remove the U3300, which is the charge controller IC. Doing this will make it easier for us to identify the short circuit. I try introducing current with the circuit in place, but the thermal camera gave confusing indication. Therefore, I conclude that it would be better and faster to remove it than to search blindly. We apply 200 Celsius degrees of heat and remove the resin from the sides. It's crucial to remove the resin in order to remove the integrate circuit. We don't forget the top layer, which also needs to be removed. If we don't remove this layer, we'll have trouble trying to remove the integrate circuit. Because of this layer, we won't be able to reach the ideal temperature for removal. When we are dealing with circuits with resin around and underneath, I like to use the lever technique. We apply 400 Celsius degrees and 30% airflow, and at the same time, we lever with the flexible spatula. In this way, we can avoid problems when we are lifting the circuit. To clean, we apply a little flux and low temperature solder paste. We use 138 Celsius degrees solder paste. Here we can see all the resin that is under the circuit. With the tip of the soldering iron at 350 Celsius degrees, we solder the pads, fuse, missing the old solder lid with the new one. Using the desoldering wick, we clean all the solder from the surface. For this, we use the thick tip of the soldering iron at 350 Celsius degrees. A thick tip distributes the working temperature much better across the entire surface. If you use a fine tip, you won't get a good result due to the lack of the temperature. We clean the area with contact cleaner and isopropyl alcohol. Then we move to the thermal camera to see where we have consumption. We place the black tip, the negative one, on the shield and the red tip, the positive one, we introduce current into one of the two capacitors that were in a short circuit. Conclusion. To find a short circuit, we can introduce current into any component of the line that is in the short, regardless of its polarity. Looking in the middle of the motherboard, you can see a short right in the middle. The component that was heating up is this capacitor, which we remove using a hot air station at 380 Celsius degrees and 20% airflow. We proceed to place a new capacitor and perform the corresponding checks. We apply solder paste and, with the help of the precision air station, we solder it at 350 Celsius degrees.
since it has not been completely soldered, I will increase the airflow from 10% to 20% to have a little more constant heat at the base of the component. Now, yes, the solder melts correctly and the component has been soldered perfectly. It's essential to remember that in life and also in micro soldering, everything is based on trial and error. We then use a multimeter to verify the component. In a capacitor, then one track should give continuity to ground and the other should have a value. We proceed to check the two capacitors that were in short circuit. It seems that the short circuit of the line has been solved with the replacement of the damaged capacitor. SMD capacitors can be damaged for several reasons. Among the most common are excess temperature on the motherboard, over voltage, incorrect handling, aging, manufacturing defects, humidity, vibration and shocks. To solder the integrate circuit, we apply a little flux and desolder it at 380 Celsius degrees and 30% airflow. We can observe that the circuit finds its ideal position by itself. You just need to find the ideal air temperature and air flow for your station. Each air station is different and you have to find the balance point to offer the best possible work. We try to turn on this device using the Mechanic Power Pro Max tool. In the description of this video, you'll find a link for its purchase. If you are working on mobile repairs, these tools are indispensable. We observe that our device turns on correctly. We go to a power laboratory supply to check consumption and we can see a consumption of 1.7 Ampere, which is a normal consumption for this device. The last step is to perform all the necessary checks to ensure the correct functioning of the device. Guys, here is Leonardo, this was today's video, we hope it has been helpful to you and we are waiting for you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.